Hey you guys, this is Raphael. I hope you're all doing well today and I hope that things are getting better in your area. I believe it is here and we hope that all of you are safe and healthy. Today I'd like to talk with you about one of the coolest looking pieces of military from the 1800s in my opinion. It's the US Model 1841 Naval Cutlass and it's the kind of sword, it's roughly patterned after one of the Roman gladiator style swords. It's got a 21 inch blade of a spear point design. There's no fuller going down either side of the blade and it has a massive handle. It has the cast brass center and it's got the fish scale designs. And up on the top, you can see the Union Eagle. And sometimes you'll notice they'll have markings like this that are probably rack numbers stuff that was put on their onboard ship. And this is the style that you picture that up close and personal fighting like you see in movies. You see them coming on board the enemy ship, attacking with these. They're a fierce looking piece that I know I wouldn't want to see somebody coming towards me with. They were made mostly by the Ames Company in Massachusetts. At the time they were in Cabotville, Massachusetts and they made them from 1841 till 1846, but they stayed in service a lot longer because at the outbreak of the war, there were a few Southern firms that patterned their swords after this, like Thomas Griswold of New Orleans made one very similar, uh, basically the same sword, just a little bit of technical differences because he didn't have the quality machinery to work with that they did up in Massachusetts at the time. The government purchased 6,600 of these from the Ames Company. Now you see a lot more than that because there were some that were sold privately. Firms like Horseman in Philadelphia sold some that are very similar but will have little differences. Because they weren't going to the government, they didn't have to meet all the technical requirements that the government required. These had the handle that's held in place by three pins. But if you're selling one in a retail situation, you don't have to have that. It's quicker, it's cheaper, and it's basically the same thing if you leave those out, but that holds it all together better. And so the Horseman made ones and several of the other companies that copied this design, they won't have that feature. They do reproduce this, so be careful. Be sure who you're getting it from. Anything from Shiloh Relics is guaranteed. Always glad to put a letter with it. All you gotta do is ask. They're a wonderful piece. Originally, they came with a leather and brass scabbard. The brass was held together by rivets on the back and it was a thick piece of, of leather. They very rarely show up today with the scabbard. The scabbard is worth a lot more than the sword is. Today, that sword without the scabbard is gonna run you, depending on where you get it, somewhere between $800 and $1,200. The scabbard, if it's a nice one and it has all the rivets and the leather's pretty, it can easily bring over $1,000. But it's a lot rarer than the swords themselves. You want to see good markings on one. They don't show up very often with good markings. A lot of times they're partially struck, but originally they would have had the Ames mark. They would have had an inspector that approved the sword. It would have the date of manufacture somewhere between 1841 and 1845. They delivered the last of them in 1846. They're a cool sword. They've got a lot of character and there's a lot of edged weapons out there that are really neatly designed, have a lot of flair and they don't cost thousands of dollars. They're a wonderful thing to collect, a lot of variation to them. And this one is one of my favorites. It's the first sword that I decided to do a segment on them because I like them. And that's one of the things I always recommend in collecting. Buy something that you like. When you look around on a website, you'll see yourself going back to that same piece. There's a reason you keep looking at it. It's because you like it, it's because you want it. And that's what you need to be collecting. 
in today's world, we've seen that the stock market and everything else, you can't guarantee anything. But if you like it, you're always going to like it. So buy what you like, buy what you can afford, buy the best quality you can afford. And it doesn't have to be something spectacular. My first U.S. belt buckle was $48, and Larry Hicklin let me make three payments on it because he knew I didn't have $48. I was so proud of that belt buckle, I took it with me in my pocket and showed it to everybody. And I was like, look at this, it's so cool. I can't believe I own a belt buckle from the Civil War. So it doesn't matter where you start in your collection. It's the fact that you appreciate the history that is wrapped up in that buckle. That buckle today would still not bring $48. You got me on that one, Larry. But I loved it wouldn't have taken anything for it at the time. And I'm so thankful that I had it. And I feel that way about so much of my collection. And I hope that you do. I hope that you appreciate the pieces that you have, especially if you got them from me. And I hope that you enjoy collecting because it's such a wonderful thing that we get to do. I hope you guys are all safe. I hope you're staying away from each other. I hope that you're enjoying your collection while you're at home. And when you're ready to add another piece to that collection, give me a call because I'll always be glad to help. And I hope only the best for you guys. And remember to be kind to each other. I love you guys.